my father was an alcoholic. We come home, we were scared to death, man. We, the stories about you hear the earth, you hear the yeah. car pull up. He's like, man, what are we gonna do? Yeah. You're a big, powerful man. Why didn't you? <sighs> Say it as it is, I think it's important. My earliest memory is my father hitting my mother in the face as hard as he could. And I remember seeing her on the floor and then looking at him, this giant of a man who I thought, my God, he says he loves her. What is he gonna do to me? And all I could think, I want to protect her. I want to protect her. And I said, I gotta be strong. And I gotta get strength. Because nobody is gonna do is gonna do my mother like that again. But when I discovered working out, and I went in that gym, I was about 13. I stayed in there and two dumbbells and just kept doing it. It was what I wanted because I could control myself. I could control my life. A few years later. This was years later. I took my whole family back from LA to Flint. We call this Christmas from hell. I brought them back and my girls were smaller then. I told my father, I said, hey, I said, don't act up. So do not get drunk and do not act up. Oh man, I know, I, I understand this. Come on back. So we leave the kids with my, my parents, my mother, father and we go out with some friends that we know and we headed to Detroit and we're gonna have a good time. I get a phone call. It's Terry, your father hit your mom. And I'm sitting there like, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just had this conversation. Just had this conversation, man. What are you doing? I got on the phone, I said, okay, I'm a grown ass man now. Now I'm a grown ass man. I'm not five anymore. I already know what's up. Get everybody out the house, take them over to our aunt's house. When we get to the house, mom, first of all, I tell my mom to go, he knocked her too sideways. Sideways. It's okay, ma, go over to aunt's house. He's sitting in the bedroom, like, ain't nothing happening. I said, so what's going on? Oh, uh, nothing, nothing. I said, didn't I tell you? And I tell you not to act up. And then I tell you. Hey! I hit him. And this is the thing. Now, this is what I want everybody to get. I didn't feel better. I didn't feel better. It didn't work. I thought that was all yep. I needed to do. Yep. And I sat down on the bed. And I just started crying, man. I was just like, it didn't work. It didn't work. And I said, man, I thought, if I could just, if I could just make you feel what everybody else felt, then you would understand and now everybody's cool. Then it would, it would clean me up. But it didn't, CT, it didn't. I felt worse. Because the thing is, with all this stuff, with all this shit, you have to rise above. But I didn't. And I beat his ass. But my wife, for years, prepared me. She said, Terry, you cannot handle these kind of things with violence. You can't hit back. Terry Crews testified in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee. So now it was back in October that Terry admitted that he was assaulted by a Hollywood agent. The assault lasted only minutes. But what he was effectively telling me was that he held the power, that he was in control. I reached my hand out and he he takes his right hand and under mine and, and just, and I'm jumping out like, hey! And then he comes back again and grabs me again. And I, I slap his hand away, push him back more forcefully. I felt nothing but rage. The first reaction was to be violent. And I immediately 
held back. Why weren't you? You're a big, powerful man. Why didn't you? <sighs> Say it as it is. I think it's important. My wife, for years, prepared me. She said, if you ever get goaded, if you ever get prodded, if you ever have anyone try to, try to push you into any kind of situation, don't be violent. The thing that calmed me down more than anything, my wife kept holding my hand. She kept grabbing my arm and said, I'm proud of you. Right now, I'm so thankful that I went the other way. You can choose the good or choose the bad. You don't have to settle for, well, this is what we did, this is how we are. You didn't come from your parents, you came through them. So you do not have to take the stuff that they have. And you know, and this is the deal. This is the deal. We have to speak up. We have to speak up. And I learned that strength is not about picking things up and throwing people around and knocking people out. The strength comes from standing up 